All right, so um, we have this table that shows how much it costs for a certain number of miles for, that you drive this U-Haul. And um, the first two questions ask for the average rate of change. So if this was a free response question on your test, I would want you to show me how you did this. And so the work would be this right here. So if you didn't write this, go ahead and jot it down just so you'll know next time. So make sure you write that part where you're finding the average rate of change. And then if it's a calculator, you can just do this in your calculator. You don't have to write any more work. But what did you guys get for the average rate of change? Good. And it, this one doesn't specifically ask for units, but what would the units be? Dollars per hour. Dollars per mile. All right, and then B, basically the same thing, just with different M values. All right, and then C asks you to graph the points and then talk about what it reveals about the relationship. What kind of relationship is there between the miles driven and the cost? Linear. Linear relationship, very good. All right, and then three, ask about, is the rate of change of the cost increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? What do you think? Yes, constant. So the cost is increasing. That's not the question. It's saying basically is the slope increasing, and it's not. It's always the same. So uh, to explain on any interval, The rate of change is 89 cents per mile. So what would you say the rate of change of the rate of change is? Uh, yes. So if it's unchanging, the rate of change is going to be zero. So we're going to put that over on the side. We're going to write that multiple times. That's kind of a big idea for this lesson is that the rate of change of the rate of change of all linear functions is zero. Great. And then you had to do a little figuring out to do four and well to do four and then use that to do five. And so we know how much it costs to drive 10 miles, um, but we want to know how much they charge if you don't drive at all. So if you just rent you all and leave it in the parking lot. Um, so there is a minimum base price. So you can take that $28.89 for driving 10 miles. And what would you need to subtract from it? 10 times the slope. Very good. 10 slopes. And that's going to be $19.99. So $19.99 just to rent it and not drive it anywhere. And then C, I'm sorry, not C, 5 might take you back to Algebra 1. So you have the slope and you basically have the intercept. And so you're going to write the equation um, for renting a U-Haul for M miles. And so you could, you could write this in any order. So you could do like the base price. Oops. Plus the slope times the number of miles you drive. Or you could flip it the other way. But make sure you use C and M. Don't use X and Y, please. So one important step up from like what you did in Algebra 2 and what you're doing in pre-calculus is just use the variables in the problem. Don't go try to your best not to go back to just X and Y. All right. Any questions on this? Okay.
let's fill in the notes. So if that made sense to you, you probably are going to be really good with these examples. Um, so like you guys figured out, linear functions have a constant rate of change. I'm going to add something to this. I don't really know why I didn't type it in here. So just kind of mark out that period. They have a constant rate of change over any length. of input intervals. Now that specification is probably going to make more sense with what we do tomorrow, but it doesn't matter if you're finding the rate of change between uh, 10 and 15 miles or between 25 and 50 miles. It's going to be the same for that U-Haul problem because it's linear. It's constant. All right. Um, and this is a new idea that you might not have ever thought before, um, that each equal interval of the domain produces an equal change in outputs. Now that is a specific objective for this class. Um, so I feel like there, that's going to be a question that they want you to come back to and understand. So I'm going to show you what that means with the U-Haul um, problem. And we'll do an example with it in just a second. So on this U-Haul question, the change in miles here is 10. So change in M is 10. So anytime you see that triangle, it means change. All right. And then here it's also 10. And if that is the case, then these two changes should also be the same. So the change in cost here was $8.90. The change in cost here is also $8.90. So that happens with linear functions. All right. And then also, you guys kind of already figured out that since the rate of change is constant of a linear function, the rate of change of the rate of change is zero. And one more way to say kind of the same thing as we've been saying is that the slope of a line represents the constant rate of change. All right, so on number one, the graph shows a function V, which gives the volume of air in an air mattress, V of T, T minutes after it begins to be deflated. V of T is measured in cubic feet. Okay, so number or letter A asks what rate, at what rate is the air mattress being deflated? So how much air did you start with in this mattress? Does it look like? 300. 300. And then how long does it take for it to be completely deflated? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. All right, so I did go ahead and I, I divided that and I just gave a decimal. And then what would the units be? Cubic feet per minute. Now, that graph obviously has a negative slope, but the question was at what rate is the mattress being deflated? So you don't want to say it's being deflated at a negative rate because that ne double negative kind of makes it mean it's being inflated. So just be really careful. And we'll talk about this throughout the year. And if you take calculus next year, we'll talk about it a lot there too. So just make sure you answer the question they're asking. So if it's asking, it's, the rate is, which is being deflated, don't give a negative value. So don't give negative rate of deflation. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you can read that or not. If it asks um, at what rate is the volume changing, then you would say negative. Kind of, it's kind of a lot to keep straight. 
All right, and then B, find the volume of the air remaining in the mattress after five minutes. So I know the beginning, there's 300 cubic feet of air. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract some slopes. How many slopes should I, should I subtract? For five minutes, five slopes. And so that is gonna be 112.5 cubic feet of air after five minutes. And then C, does the air mattress lose air at a faster rate during the first five minutes it is being deflated? Or during the last five minutes it is being deflated? Or at neither of those times? What do y'all think? Is it ever deflating faster than another time this linear? No. So this is a trick question. This is neither. The air is being deflated. At a constant rate. The whole time. Okay, so number two is kind of a way to test your knowledge on this part right here. So equal interval of the domain produces equal change in outputs. So the first one actually isn't testing that. So um, we know that we have this function f and it's linear. And I know that if I do f of 4 minus f of 1, I get negative 27. Let's say I want to find the rate of change of f. What would I do with that negative 27 to figure that out? Any ideas? What does that look like? What would you divide by? Three. Yes. So it looks like the top part of the average rate of change. Like that. And so if the top part of the average rate of change is f of 4 minus f of 1, what should the denominator be? 4 minus 1 or 3, like he said. So it's negative 27 divided by 3 or negative 9. Okay. So now for B, I want to find f of 11 minus f of 8. Do we know that without knowing the function? What is it? What's the difference between 4 and 1? What's the difference between 11 and 8? Yeah. So if f of 4 minus f of 1 is negative 27, and this is a linear function, this is also negative 27 because the difference between our x's is the same, so the difference between the outputs should be the same. These are kind of tricky questions and ones that I'm sure you've never seen before because I've never taught that actual idea before. Okay, and then for C, what do you guys think about C? What does it look like that's an equation for or a expression for? The average rate of change. This is a linear function, so the average rate of change is always going to be the same. So it's just the same as the average rate of change because it's linear. So in this case, sometimes the contextual problems are more difficult because there's like lots of like real life things going on. In this case, I think the contextual problems are easier to do than the abstract problem. Okay, we have one more example, and it's about a Cold Stone Creamery. Have you guys been to a Cold Stone Creamery before? Or Marble Slab or Maggie Mix? They're all kind of the same. You get like a base ice cream, and then you can get mix-ins. And so Jeremy buys Love It, which I assume is a type of ice cream at Cold Stone Creamery and selects mixed ins 
The cost of his ice cream is given by that function, where C of M is the cost in dollars of the ice cream and M oh, with M mix-ins. So A asks us to interpret the slope of the graph of C in the context of this problem. So what is the slope here? Like what numerical value? Right, 0 0.99. And what does that mean for this problem with ice cream and mix-ins? Very good. So each mix-in costs an additional 99 cents. And I, I worded this one kind of weird because I didn't want to say Y intercept because there's not a Y here. It's C and M. So I call it the vertical axis intercept. It's basically the same. So the intercept in this problem is this 5.29. So what do you think that means in the context of this problem? Very good. So the base price with no mixes. All right, so what questions do you guys have about linear functions? And write a chain, I should say. Oh,